Hi and welcome to this DCP Word tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the if function in Microsoft Excel. So let's go ahead and open up this spreadsheet. And inside this spreadsheet, I've got some data that I've just added in just to speed up this process explaining this function. So we've got an invoice date, we've got an invoice number, we've got a date paid, a job that we've done, a company that we're going to invoice, and the total amount of the invoice itself, right? And we want to autofill this column or set uh, an if function to say whether the invoice has been paid or not paid, right? Has this customer paid us or not paid us? So we can use an if function to do that. So what we can do is type in if, uh, let's type in equals if, and we'll click on the if function. And the first thing it's asking me for is a logical test. So it's what Excel is saying, at all the values or all of these cells here, which one are we going to test? first of all right what is the test case and it's going to be this cell here if this cell contains a value so we're saying if c2 is greater than zero so we want to make sure that c2 c2 contains a value that is greater than zero that's the first condi first condition and if it is greater than zero we put in a comma and it's asking us what should we do if if it is greater than zero what would the value be here for this particular cell so we're going to put a speech mark and type in yes and then we're going to put in a comma and it says what if the value is false then we put a speech mark remember speech marks are for text-based values right and we'll set it to no and then we'll close the bracket and hit enter and you can see it's marked as no and if we copy this function all the way down the spreadsheet all of them will be marked as no because it is true right this value here is not greater than um zero because that's what our function says it says if c2 or if c3 or 4 or 5 if any of these values or these cells here is greater than zero mark it as yes if it's not greater than zero mark it as no so right now this cell contains a value that is less than zero right or has no value it's not greater than zero so if we take a date like this one so let's say we sent an invoice to this person on the first of the first and they paid on the third if we could just copy that value and paste it in here you'll see that it's marked as yes automatically right because now the function is saying if C2 is greater than zero, the date value is greater than zero, right? It has a value in there. Then we can mark the cell as yes. If it's not, then we mark it as no. So this one stays as yes, and the rest of them will stay as no. So we can randomly pick some dates and just paste them into here, like this, right? And we can see now they're marked as yes, the ones that have dates in them. So we could do um, a conditional format to make that a little bit clearer. We could go to condition. Let's see. Let's um, let's um, highlight this column here, and we'll go to condition format. Highlight cell rules and text that contains a value of yes. We want to mark it as light green. So anything that is yes, we're going to mark it as light green. Now they're light green and then we can take that same column and go back to conditional format and go to text that contains the value no mark it as red so now we've got a, now we've got a visual highlight to say which ones we need to chase which clients we might need to chase to pay an invoice right but if we were to delete this value here can you see it's marked as yes if we delete this value automatically it will turn red uh, and be marked as no if we undo that automatically it turns yes and goes green so we can take this value and paste it into here and this will turn into green and be marked as yes now right so that's conditional format a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial but we can use conditional formatting to highlight cells as well just wanted to explain that but more importantly we can use the if function to change the value of a particular cell based on a certain condition set in another cell let's just look at that one more time if c2 if this value is greater than zero then mark this particular cell here yes if it's not greater than video uh, greater than zero then mark it as no you can see it's marked as yes let's move down this spreadsheet a little bit and we've got some fruits here right so we've got an apple we've got a mango we've got an orange and we've got a pear so we could write an if statement we could do something like let's have a little bit of fun so we could do something like if if statement open bracket this value c um cell a26 equals apple so if it if it equals the value apple then let's let's just do open bracket let's just say make a fruits 
drink, right? So if it equals apple, make a fruit drink. Otherwise, eat the fruit. And then close the bracket and hit enter. So does this value here equal apple? Then it says make a fruit drink. If we copy this, these uh, values down this formula or this function, we can see the rest of them say eat the fruit. It doesn't equal apple. If we double click on here, only if the condition is it equals apple, make a fruit drink. This is true, then it will make a fruit drink. Otherwise, eat the fruit. So if we take apple and overwrite pear, it will change that value here automatically. So that's another example of using the if function to change the value or to change the statement within a particular um, cell as well, right? But that's based on um, a text-based value, whereas this one was based on numeric-based, right? It's greater than, but this one is equal to a specific text-based value. Here is um, some people, right, in a company. Let's say you're running a business and uh, you each person is generating sales per month. Let's just say they're doing this many sales as an example. It's just test data, right? Let's move this down slightly. Um, and it says here, James made £500 worth of sales. Tony did 800 Leon did 1500 Jane did 1200 And Amy did 600 And we want to pay these people a commission if they sell more than a certain value, right? So let's just say the target is to make more than... Um, let's say 700 pounds, right? You have to make more than 700 pounds in order to earn a commission. So if we did equals if, and if we said if uh, open bracket, this value is greater than 700 comma, then we'll take this value 500 or this cell B34, and we'll multiply it by 0 0.1 which is 10 percent right or 0 0.10 which will be 10 percent or 0 0.1 is actually 10 percent as well or set it to a null value no commission and then we close the bracket and hit enter so unfortunately james did not earn more than 700 so he gets no commission this month but if we copy this formula down we can see that tony made 800 so 10 percent of 800 would be 80 tony gets 80 pounds commission right bonus commission leon gets 150 jane gets 1200 and unfortunately amy did not make more than 700 so she gets no commission so these three will get commission and this one won't if you just open up this cell and if you want to be a bit more generous you could set the value to 500 and hit enter and then copy this new formula down or the function down and then jane would amy would get a commission because her cell was greater than 500 Unfortunately, James is not getting no uh, bonus commission this year or this month, right? So this is made up data, but I'm just showing you how the if function might work. If you were to set that value to a lower value like 400, then everyone would get a commission. There'll be no point in writing this function. You just might as well write just a basic function that would just calculate the 10%, right? But we'll set this back to 700 because then we can copy this down and we see only these two people or these three will get a commission here is um end of year sales right so these are the same people but james pulled his finger out and he did 500 pound worth of sales on a given month but at the end of the year he smashed it and did 40 grand worth of sales right and as a business we might, we might want to reward everyone in the company rather than just certain people at the end of the year, you might get your monthly commission, right, for your or your monthly bonus. But at the end of the year, we do a grand total. And if you hit a grand total value, then everyone gets a piece of the commission. Let's say it's a grand total, right? So what we would want to work out, first of all, is um, the year commission, right? So we want to say something like, if everyone in the company, if everyone in the company made more than a hundred thousand pound total sales right a hundred thousand pound total sales but to do this we want to calculate what is the grand total of this value all of these values here we need to make sure it's over a hundred thousand so we can add a function within a function so we can remember we looked at the sum function before right so we can do if sum of these values right and then close that function is greater than one hundred thousand then do something and what we want to do is calculate the sum again so we do sum function right select these values again 
close it and we're going to give 5% of the total value. So then we multiply it by 0 0.05 or we set the value to zero. There's no commission. So if we hit enter, we'll see that the value comes to 6,800. So what we've done is we've written a function. It looks quite complicated, right? But it's easy to understand if you, if you look at it logically. If the sum of all these values, so the total of all these values, which is this sum function, is greater than 100,000, which it clearly is, right? It's greater than 100,000. Then do a true statement, which says the sum should equal 0.5%, right, of the total values. So we're getting the total value again, and we calculate in 0.5%, um, or setting it to a null value. So if we were to set this to 200,000, then this would fail and it will be set to zero. We hit enter. They did not make 200,000. We can check that logic quite easily just by clicking here. And if we did something like equals sum, right? Just let's get the sum value of all of these here and then click enter. We can say that this is the total earned or the total generated, right? Total um, value, right? Total, or let's do the total year sales so we know the total year sales is 136,000 so when we look at this function we can say the total needs to be greater than 100,000 and clearly it is 136,000 then take the total value and calculate 5% of that value or set it to zero and we hit enter 5% of this 136,000 would be uh, 6,800 now how many staff do we have because we need to take this 6,500 uh, 6,800 and divide it by the member of staff and give everyone a uh, a piece of that pie, let's say, yeah? the piece of the, the total value. So we could use the count function. Remember, we used that in the previous tutorial. So we could just count the values, right? We could use the count A or count function. We can use both, really. It doesn't really matter. But in this case, we'll use the count function and we'll open the bracket and we'll select these values here. And all we're asking Excel is to tell us how many have we selected in here. How many is there, right? And we hit enter, and it says there's five. There's one, two, three, four, five rows of, or five cells of data, five. We could also use the count a function, um, and that allows us to, to uh, get a total, but on text-based values, right? If we open this up and drag this across to here, and then hit enter, it will give us a null value because it, did the count function only works on numeric values if you remember in our previous tutorial so if we delete this and if we wanted to add or get the total here we need to do equals count a right click on the function and then we can select these ones and then close the bracket and hit enter and we still get five so count a would would take text-based values and numeric values it will work with both of them count on its own doesn't do that so we could click here drag this across let's double click drag this function to here and hit enter and we'll still get five right so remember count a is for text and numeric count on its own is only for numeric and we get the value of five here which is what we want because then we can calculate the staff bonus um, we could just write our own little calculation here we could say this this cell here equals this value divided by this value right and hit enter and then everyone in each person would now get a commission of £1,360, right? Okay, let's go ahead and save this. So that's how you use the if function. It's, um, you know, there's more, many more examples I could give of how to use it, but just getting a general understanding of how to use the if function, this is quite a, an interesting way, especially this formula here, where we're using nested formulas or nested functions, right? We've got a function within a function. So it's quite important that you understand that we can do calculations um, using nested functions like this. This is quite interesting. Okay, let's move back to the top. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's close this down. That's how you go about using the if function in Microsoft Excel. Hopefully you find this tutorial interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can access over 600 free video tutorials. That's the end of this video tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.